Now, I'll admit, I was very wrong about My Hero Academia, um, primarily surrounding Dabby. So, if I've made a mistake, and I chose a hill to die on, and it turned out that was the wrong hill, I'll own it. And in this case, when it looked like he was defeated, I thought he was defeated. Like, I was, there was no question in my body that he was actually down for the count. And maybe in hindsight that's foolish, but in my defense, I didn't think this man was such a natural born prodigy that he could see a move one time and more or less copy it in his own way to continuously destroy his body for that extra flame power up. But goddamn, that was probably the most shooketh point for in the episode, because when that happened, pretty much naturally, it's like, it's like me saying I refuse to accept Bakugo is dead. Now, I'm more willing to accept he's dead after this episode than I did in the previous one. But even I'm still like, no, he'll he'll come back, right? Like, there's just no way they actually keep him gone. Right now, we got the whole heart contractions shit going on. More or less kind of what I was expecting. I just wasn't expecting Edshot to be a part of the whole thing, which was really cool. But the idea that Dabby... <laughs> like, I've never seen a character with so much hate fueling him. But the fact that he's... I thought they cuffed that fool, they locked his powers down. I thought we were good on that part. And the fact that this episode comes in for the first half basically showing... All the main players, whether that's the main attraction with Shiggy, Endeavor stuff, the brothers, it's just like, it felt like no progress has been made. And I will admit, I was wrong. I thought people were absolutely insane to even be under the assumption that Dabby could come back. So at this point, Dabby could be sitting on the Iron Throne by the end of the show for all I know. But this man is full of hate, and I honestly thought he was done for. I was wrong. Do a full live reaction so over on Patreon. If you want to see my full link of thought to any of these My Hero Academia episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively. So, they left us for a week, uh, sitting on the death of Bakugo. I think we don't have an episode next week either, but I think it's because of the Olympics, just because a lot of shit's going on like that. Uh, is what it is, I suppose. But wow, uh, Deku finally has made his return, and honestly, if he didn't come there, there's no way we would have won, right? Like, I think they would have died there. I don't think there was any final hurrahs. The last hurrah we had in us was our boy popping up to show his cake as a minor distraction. And while as voluminous as that cake might be, even that wasn't going to be enough to stop the big bad. But that's actually kind of hilarious. There might be some people who will say, that's a little too silly, we're in a very serious situation, why should we do that? You can't tell me with a straight face that if you were actually in an end of the world level threat where your villain's like super in the moment, if some <laughs> high school student popped up to flash his ass like that, I think most people would probably be like, what the f- What? Like, not that Shiggy was into it, more of like a, are you kidding me? And they only needed two seconds because they needed to drop the barrier and let Deku in reactivate the barrier brilliant stuff um but legitimately there's no way we would have won i think ever i was actually ready for best genus to die in this upset i was like you know what maybe he actually does have a I, i'm thinking about who has death flags in this show and this episode started making me think genus was gonna die right old bj wasn't gonna make it to the finish line at this point i have no damn idea but it's the escalation and the fact that this man's so pissed off that as we're healing Baku, right or like attempting to revive him right we patch up his heart we're doing the compressions right it's like basically cpr from the inside uh he's like don't don't fix what i've just like we just we get under his skin in such a way and at some point this man drops the finger blaster 10,000 and turns into the hulk buster and honestly the face design of how the, the hands kind of cover his mouth and stuff actually looked pretty cool but like this man just it reminds me of when you play a boss fight like, especially in, like, a Dark Souls, Bloodborne, or whatever, right? You finally get through, you think, the main health bar, and then the second phase comes in. But it's even worse than that. Because sometimes, what will happen is you got this long-ass bar. We get him down to here, and then his new phase starts. And most likely, what's going to happen with Deku is once Deku gets him to the finish line, then he's going to get into his true final form, and it's just going to keep on going, man. Like... It's good that Deku's finally here, but it is... It ain't looking good for us. The one bright side is that, you know, on Endeavor stuff, it's like, if that didn't work on Endeavor side, what is gonna work, right? Like, there's nothing left. If this man can heal himself because he's using Ares Rewind ability, uh, thankfully they gave him a handicap that is very important. 
So he's pretty much going to destroy himself. He's going to rewind himself into nothing is what they're implying. Like, it's you use it and you're basically destined to be rewound into literally nothing. And without that, I don't think they would have won because Endeavor literally did his final blast. If that didn't work, nothing's going to work. Unless, you know, you dealt with Shiggy and then you could go over. Like, there's just no way, really, right? Like, let's, be, let's just be honest. There was no way. So the idea that... They actually are set up pretty good. Deku's finally where he needs to be, which means that the fight with Shiggy has its shot now. Granted, it's kind of all on him at the moment because everyone else is kind of down for the count. But I'm sure they'll still try to help. Endeavor stuff, it's more about holding out as long as possible as this man probably erases himself into nothing. Mm. Shoto stuff is interesting because on one hand... Uh, it kind of feels like what's happening is he's mastered and kind of like he saw it like basically one time and he's doing a similar thing, but he doesn't have the cooling effect, right? Which is a big thing that he has to in order so he doesn't overheat himself. But we are dealing with a guy who basically is, you know, destroying himself for through pure rage to keep himself going. So if anything, I'll probably just keep him going. But it's possible if you hold out long enough, he might also burn himself out. That is also a possibility. But yeah, it's... uh. It's been non-stop action, and it doesn't feel like they're dragging it out. It actually feels like an end-of-the-world level threat that should be easy to defeat, and they're making it in a very intelligent way is the best way to put it. The Bakko stuff is more or less what I expected, though the edge shot addition to it was actually pretty cool. I didn't see that coming. Um, everyone else is just getting body slammed. Deku arriving when he did does feel like the appropriate moment. I kind of saw that one coming. Endeavor's stuff, I... <sighs> I thought, I thought they were bones, so it's a good thing there's at least a handicap, but yeah, that's uh, that's a little shocking. But the brother stuff was the most shocking for me, I'm going to be honest. People are going to be like, oh no, I, I just knew he was going to come. I didn't. I really thought he was down for the count. Uh, it's almost as unexpected as this man using his ass as a as a distraction. You, you could show that out of context to a lot of people. They'll say, oh, this anime is too stupid, but that's honestly brilliant. Think about all the final battles you've seen in anime. And tell me with a straight face that if you didn't Casper the Friendly Ghost up with your ass like that, that it wouldn't be enough to probably be like, the fuck? And then give you enough opportunity to do a sucker punch. It would probably work three out of ten times, which may not seem like a lot, but that's actually a decent amount of final battles that could have been twisted on their head by flashing some ass. Can't say that about every show. Now those are just my thoughts, so let me know what you thought of this week's episode, and uh, favorite moment if you got any. To be honest, I think just the idea of Best Genius attempting and then Edshot coming in to do that combination was actually probably my favorite point, especially with how they detailed it. But let me know what you're feeling down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. All right, so today we got Alpha X Shrew, Lamb Seal, Cleese, Sokin the Lurker, and we also have Levy GR. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.